It's Craggy's Conic Rugby Podcast. It's the post-match podcast after the squeak of a win, or as the BBC have just said, Connacht snatched that win, apparently. What? Um, not sure what game they were watching, I just saw the highlight. Um, we're in TG Carr Studios, where they provide us, as always, a brilliant service. Rob Murphy and William Davis are with me, and before we talk to them live, as in the podcast, let's hear what they said at the end of the match, because they gave a really good uh, breakdown of what happened. Not a good start from Connor. We're on the back foot in these early stages. There goes a chance for Roots to get over the line. Has he done so? He has. It's tapped to back another high kick that Connick didn't deal with. And they're going to attack the short side. Kieran Williams might be in here. One pass back inside. They're going to score a try. What a disastrous start for Connick. Free play for Connick. Played. Can they make something of it? Carty scoops it all the way out to the wing. Alex Wooden's in for a try. That's what Connick needed. Connick push up. And that's a beautiful flow to pass to Hawkshaw. Skipping Cardi. That fools everyone. Here goes Tom Farrell right through the gap. Now Hawkshaw. He puts on the afterburners. Goes into contact. One metre from the line he stopped. Quick ball might do it. Blade goes for the line. Connick have their second try. Oh, that was a wonderful move off the back of a scrum, middle of the pitch, inside, just inside their own half of the field. It fooled the Ospreys' defence and it was finished superbly. Connacht need to recycle again. They're inches from the Ospreys' line, leading by two points. The Ospreys' defence is pretty impressive. Now it comes out from Blade. There it is. John Porch is in for a try. Free play for Connacht. What will they do with it? Blade back into the hands of Carty. He's going for a drop goal to put them two scores ahead. Jack Carty, has he got this right? Oh, I think he has. He has. I would say, attacking-wise, this was the first game of the entire season where there were some superb moments. Let's take Caelan Blade's try in the first half. You're 12-0 down, you can see the tries to Sutton, and a second try to the Ospreys. I'm having a brain freeze, but they got the two tries on the board early on. It was Ruben Williams in a scrum half. So they had their two tries at that point, and then Connacht get back into the game with a great score from Alex Wooden. Now you're in the contest, 12-7, right in the stroke of halftime. Beautiful move to get their second try. Absolutely fabulous move. Tom Farrell involved. Simple play in midfield. Hmm. Misread by the Ospreys. Boom, boom, you're in. You're leading. Alex Wooden's try, we've seen that all season. Mac Hansen has scored a couple of them. It takes a player of Jack Curry, uh, Jack, Jack Carty's courage, and sometimes, to just get that pass out. Get it out, move it into the space, and say to the winger, right, you're one on one. Wingers expect to score there, and defenders are never sure. And it was a beautiful pass, got the job done. Second half, they got the try right at the start of the second half, and then the Ospreys came back in. Uh, just listening to the crowd in the background, great credit to the Connick fans. They're giving a great reception to the Connick players. What I liked about that second half, Porch gets that first try. It was a huge start to the second half. You're leading by two, you've turned the game on its head. We said here uh, in studio off air, the Ospreys are going to hit them hard in the second half. Can they start better than they did in the first half? Yes, they did. They had to. It's been a weak point for Connacht for quite a while. They're well aware of it. That the, 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 Between minutes 40 and 55, Connacht often go to sleep, whether they're chasing a game or whether they're leading. That didn't happen here. They got the score. They kept playing. Look, that's a weak Ospreys team. We have to be yeah, absolutely honest players about it. Well shy, but You're these are the type of games Connacht have lost consistently. Consistently, the over the years. And it's great that the winning score was a drop goal. I'm delighted. <laughs> yes, that's and the difference, yes. That, that was the difference. Jack and Carty. Play to Jack Carty. I think he still getting back but he is the key man he makes the decisions they won the kicking battle for the second week in a row when they come back uh, four weeks tonight they've got 10 weeks of rugby in a row six in the URC four in Europe when that 10 weeks finishes they're going to know whether they're competitive in this competition or whether they're competitive in Europe or hopefully in both and that's the thing you need squad players we people talk about Leinster you look at Leinster they're seven out of seven they are seven out of seven because they have a squad that they can interchange players, and you have Munster to tonight as well. One yes. monster with a squad, they can interchange players, yeah, and that's what you need. And you have to you have to back them, and you have to have them ready. That wasn't perfect. There's a lot to work on. Yeah, people are going to look at the league table tomorrow. Right? They're going to feel really good at home. And I know fans are going to open up the Sunday papers. And maybe someone who hasn't been in touch too much. And they're going to look down until they find Connacht and Munster. Yes, Connacht have jumped ahead of Munster, which is great, as I said. But at the same time, they're down towards the bottom because they've only won three of their seven games, leaving aside who they were playing and all that. So just tell me, are they a three from seven team for the rest of the season? 
that won't be enough for the playoffs obviously or can they kick on now and can they be more of a the three from four team that they are in the last four games I think they can be I think the way the season sets up for them now there are some key home games they've got to win all their home games they've got they really have or they've certainly are only in a position to drop one they've got three played at home they've got six to come they need to win five out of those six better still if they win all six but they're winnable games uh, they've got a couple of interesting away games when Including the Six Nations the is one. on. The next one is massive because Munster tonight got away with getting a bonus point. Ulster will be disappointed that they gave them anything. But that's one of the the key challenges. Is four weeks tonight when they go down to Thoman Park. They will have some players back a couple of players who might have a few knocks Bundyaki will be back the Irish play, depends on how much rugby they play for Ireland there might be the odd player coming back maybe a Keen Prendergast or something like that might drift back into the, back into it but they finished this run of seven games with two wins and they're, they've got themselves back on the road OK guys you were you were on flying for them tonight as I say I was I was put it up on the, our Discord channel that I was, I was losing all this great audio and then realised I'll just get it off John in the morning and <laughs> get it yeah. get it popped up there so um, you've had a few more minutes you've been talking to Andy Rob actually let's hear what Andy had to say but you, do we not get to talk? I just want to get this the audio stuff out of the way and then right. I can just relax and enjoy the rest of it fair enough Andy Friend on Galway Bay FM here um you know, any away win at any point in time in this competition is just a great starting point. So to begin with, um, for sure, a little bit of relief with the way it finished, but you just must be ultimately delighted. Uh, it's a funny one, Rob, because yes, we are. Um, but again, our performance lacked the clinical bits that we wanted it to lack. With a lot of fight, as you've seen, like we're a, you know, a brave group of men and, and they fight, um, which is a great kind of trait. But We've just, we're making life so hard for ourselves. We had six entries into the 22 in the first 25 minutes for zero return um, turnover every single time. And, you know, we're one of the better teams at getting in the 22, but our, our ability or inability to execute there is um, we need to change that, mate. So, listen, bottom line, happy with the win, but uh, yeah, not as happy with the performance. No, I can understand that because obviously I'm just straight out of a commentary and we're, we're, kind of looking at the game as it happens and there's periods in the game where we were just shaking our heads at 30 minutes kind of really are in a lot of bother and also maybe even the way that the Ospreys came back into the game you probably will have some issues with some of the with the doors that were open perhaps yeah and, and again like I actually think um you know the work that Pete Wilkins has done on our defense has been sensational but there was there were two two really soft tries there tonight which we, we haven't been guilty of the last three weeks so um but, you know, 12 nil down and, and then to show that fight and it will steady the ship initially and show that fight to go in 14-12 up at half time, to come out to score that first try after the break was good. But we should have kicked on. You know, honestly, we should have kicked on. But listen, here we are, you know, not complaining, but um, not happy with the fact that we've come to the Ospreys and we've got to win. We, we, we feel like we can be better than that. We need to be better than that. Are you happy that you have a four-week break? Yeah, I am. I am, Rob, because uh, uh, as you've seen, mate, there are areas of our game that need to, need to be tidied up. So it gives us a chance just to settle. Um, it gives us a chance now to, you know, to do a proper audit on, on these first seven weeks um, with three wins out of seven. Uh, we put ourselves back in the hunt in terms of, you know, we're, we're still very much alive in this competition. We have had a, a really tricky start, but bottom line is we need to be better in, in some key areas of our game. So I've no doubt of all the confidence that we will fix those and we'll get better, but the breaks come at a good time to allow us to assess that and, and to, to address it and, and see if we can make those changes. Squad, just today, I feel, just after this, is getting a little bit deeper now because Wooten shows a bit of form, scores a try, Adam Byrne, and you took a decision to bring Grant Stewart on uh, with Sam Elo at a time that we felt was ooh, could be risky because he had two players coming off that were playing well. Can you just maybe speak to that? Yeah, listen, I, I mean, at that time, we felt um, we, we needed a bit of freshness. Um, and again, when, when you're here live, you, you can see work that's happening off the football. And we just felt that, that our tight five had, had expended a lot of energy in that opening 12, 13 minutes of the second half. Um, and we were just starting to wane a little bit. So 
but, but there's a there's a credit to, to both Grant and and to Sam when they came on, and to all the boys when they came on. They actually added a bit of spark for us, which was good. And as you say, great to have Alex Putin back scoring tries and and looking good under the high ball. Good to see Adam Byrne out there for the first time. Um, so it, we are getting stronger as a squad, mate, as a collective. We definitely are, and that's something I'm really, really pleased with. I think a lot of Connacht fans will want to hear what you thought of Darren Murray's performance because, look, he's a distinctive character, but the way he plays, we saw it with the Irish under-20s. We saw it there. For a young lad, he really took to it very well. Oh, he's, a, he's a very astute footballer. He... Um, you know, and he's 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 a big bodied boy, but he's only going to get bigger um, and stronger. But he's just a very clever footballer. He sees it, and you've seen it from his brother the last few weeks. They're they're, they're, they're a tremendous family of, football, of of sports people, and um, we're lucky to have two of them. And and for those two to be homegrown is really important for Connor. So that's his first cap. Um, I, I thought he was. I thought he. You know, he, he certainly looked comfortable out there. And there's a lot more to come from that fella. Dara's first cap, Jared's 100th cap. He's getting a presentation in there. Maybe speak to his performance. Yeah, it was a typical Jared Butler performance. He just, you know, he does all the all the grafting work. And as he said to me the other day, my job's about dotting the I's and crossing the T's, friendly. And, and that's what he does. He just, he's always there or thereabouts um, involved in in something that's, that's positive for us. So um, not only his on-field performance, but just, his professionalism, the way he leads himself um, as a professional and, you know, the example he sets, he's a brilliant role model for us and uh, just a tremendous break to have in the squad. So really, really pleased for him. I've been calling him to Sir Don Bradman all week and I said to him, as a, I'd actually love to keep calling you Sir Don because I just love singing the song when I when I say it to you. But thankfully for him, he's off the, um, he's off the 99 now and he's 100, he's got his century, so uh, a centurion. Last one for me. Uh, you've you've got to a point in the season now where the results are kind of things that the Connacht have done before as well, and nothing set in the world alike. But there are signs in line out play and other things that real hope that there's progress. This game in Tolman Park, Andy, if Connacht were to win there, it's a whole different level in terms of playoff contention. It doesn't mean it's the end of the season if you don't, but maybe could you speak to that fixture when you get back? How important it's going to be? Well, I think we're all very aware of. Of the importance of that fixture to another Interpro. Um, I thought we went close there last year um, to knocking off Munster. Um, we had a good win against them at the sports ground. Um, but, you know, they're a very proud club too. So I know they lost there today. Um, they, they don't want to make that a habit. So it's a huge game for us. It's a huge game for them. We've both got three weeks to sort ourselves out and come back. And uh, it should be a beauty. Okay, now we can talk, Rob. I get to be introduced <laughs> on the podcast. I was yes. on, obviously, already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rob Murphy and William Davis here joining us. That was an excellent win at the end, yeah. considering the start. I get where Andy Friend is coming from. I don't know what William thinks. I totally get it. I mean, I was coming on there going, congratulations, and he's like, hmm, because he's a coach and he's a professional. And there's a whole... Deval Seneca, oh, if you didn't catch it, listen to it. William has a brilliant interview with him before the game. Go back and listen to it now, folks. I don't care. You might think, oh, but that was before the game. No, it's just to give you great insight into his ability to kind of communicate some of the stuff behind the scenes. Very, I've uh, been impressed with him before. as most impressive, I think. Uh, but my reason for saying that is they're all so worried about so many aspects. And I think, you know, we, I've been combative on this in the last couple of weeks because I was kind of worried about a lot of aspects and I still am. But like the bottom line is like we're winning all the games that I would have said on paper we need to win. We're not really, you know, brilliant all the time. And I don't necessarily believe all the signs we're seeing at the moment tell me we're going to make the playoffs because that's my bottom line. I need to see this group make the playoffs this year. But we're bloody well not showing anything that say we won't either. I agree. I agree. And William, about well, after Connacht had let in the second try and they'd, they'd lost the ball and had that where they almost went over the line, but I think it was Jack Angel looked like he scored a try, but didn't. And then Ospreys kicked it down the field, got it uh, uh, 50-22. I actually jumped online because I had a bet on Connacht win by 11 points <laughs> and went, OK, what are Connacht now? And they were 2-1. So I took that bet at that point in the game because although... They looked as though they had a bit of white line fever and they looked as though they didn't have the composure in the 22. They were actually dominating the game. They were, I think. Um, they say 2-0 is the worst lead in football. I think the Ospreys actually were shocked to be 12-0 up and they weren't quite sure what to do. 
and they switched off a bit. But Connacht got a lot better from minute 30 on, and they dominated the last 10 minutes of the first half. And to score two tries, one of which is in the time for the referee's discretion at the end of the half, and suddenly you're 14-12 up, that's a terrible shock. And they came out then and scored a try right at the start of the second half. The problem, as I suspect Andy Friend and the coaches will want to know, is why they didn't kick on. Because they didn't really kick on. The Ospreys came back into it a bit. Connacht worked very hard in defence. Uh, set plays were good. Uh, the players that came off the bench, particularly Elo, uh, Sam Elo and uh, Dara Murray, had big, big games and some big calls, which you've already heard Andy discussing, uh, in how the substitutes were made and when they were made, that was a good, it was a good win. It was a hard-working win that they dug out. Uh, if they start like that against uh, Munster, by the, the, you, won't, you won't be 12 points down at, at Solman Park and come back. They've got to sort that issue out. And they've got to get a little bit more ruthless. I think, again, they were possibly surprised that they went from 12 nil to 19-12. And that maybe got into their, own, into their own minds a little bit as well. But I agree with Rob. It's the three games you, they had to win. Mm. It would have been nice if they'd picked up one other win along yeah. the way. I think that's yeah. an issue. Stormers uh, or Leinster? Stormers or Leinster. Stormers, in particular, was a game that did slip away, unfortunately, with, with the Bundyaki red card, changed that game on its head. Um, but they can go away now and they can switch off for a little while, see where they're going and start plotting their way through the season. There's very, very important games to win at home, but it starts in four weeks tonight in Thoman Park. We'll be sitting in Thoman Park about four weeks tonight at this time and it'll be interesting the story we're telling there because if they win there and they go 4-4, four, four, and then they've got Benetton coming, then the whole season ah, can, can flip around. William, if they win there, right? Okay, because they're capable, they've done it, what, twice in the last uh, six or eight years. They can they can do it. But this one, this is the one. Munster are in trouble. They're a little bit on the ropes. This is the one. I'm not saying must win. I'm not saying you don't make the playoffs if you don't. But, like, you want people to go, wow, sit up and say, yeah, there's something in this group. Now's the chance. And they've got four weeks to do it. I, I just think it's the biggest game in the history of Andy Friend's coaching in Connacht. Um, no, I'm not sure about that. But I can think I, can I stress? Can I just okay. clarify? Yeah, yeah. It's the biggest opportunity. Like it, 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 if they win, it'll be the biggest win for him, for me. It'll be because it's just a, it's bringing them to the next level. If they don't win, it's not. So there's no pressure on it. So I see why you kind of push back on that. But I think if they win this, oh, it's next level stuff. I think it's very important that they win there, uh, and I think it's very important we have uh, that we get a full performance. With the exception of Ulster, which was a complete outlier because they were a shambles that night, they were awful, they haven't yet played a really bad game all season where they've absolutely not been competitive at times, made some decent scores and contributed to the game, which they didn't do in Belfast. But we also haven't seen a full, a really good performance. That wasn't a really good performance. Uh, it was scrappy, it was messy, it was hard working. They want to play, I, th I think they have become a bit more pragmatic. I think they've realised that trying to play this really high speed game, that's great if you're in the lead and you're coasting along and you're inside the opposition half. But tonight there was some really good kicking from Jack Carty. That puts pressure on the Ospreys. They didn't seem to know what to do. Their, their out half is very inexperienced. Looks a decent player, Jack Walsh, but at times he was, you know, he was literally shrugging his shoulders because somebody must have been saying so. And he's going, "Well, what, what, what was, what did you want me to do?" And that comes from the solid defence that Connacht have. Apart from those, like the, in, in the first minute of the game, was a strange bounce and the ball went the wrong way and it was a bit of a weird pass, and they didn't quite get that. And the second one was a very well, a very well worked try by the Ospreys. But other than that, the Ospreys didn't actually look like they were going to score a try. I agree. Yeah. And that's three games in a row now. Connacht, right. four now, I suppose, if you look back. They've only let one try in the, the play, previous three games and only two tonight. Well, back to you, but tonight was the first time I actually felt really confident and aware of that. That's the true phrase. I get that you guys have been saying that it's there, but I've just seen bits that I'm like, a lot of tries were leaked in those first three games, for example. But tonight was the first time when the wall just looked 
God, yeah, you could you could feel a bit of comfort with, with it. Let's take the last six minutes. I mean, Osprey just went further and further and further back. And you were saying it in, in the piece that we heard there. Dara Murray was an example of what was happening. One smash off the next. Elo had a couple of good smashes in there. So the Grand Steward. That's what you need. Um, better teams than the Ospreys will ask you different questions and more difficult questions. And there's plenty of those to come. But... If you get your foundation right in your defence, you leave them with very little option but to to try something. I was surprised the Ospreys didn't give it a go a bit earlier. They almost seemed to settle for the, the, the bonus point loss. Well, you have to remember their two centres, it's the first time they played since last February. They had, you know, it was a very, very young, inexperienced team that they had out. Um, which is why I'd put money on Connacht to win by a lot more than they did. Um, but then if you take out those first couple of scores, Connacht did win by a lot more than most people have expected. And they've never scored a try bonus in that stadium and they didn't really look like scoring it again. Well, tonight. they had a good chance at the end. And, and this is one of the things I think is going to be critical, right? I, I put it to both of you, whichever one of you to take it. But if Connacht are going to be a, a really like get the job done type force those first five six visits that Andy Friend mentioned in the first half to the 22 are not going to cut it as a playoff team and those moments we said it in the commentary that where they stop and start thinking about things they got to stop the, the big teams the playoff teams don't think they get it done brilliant turnover inside their 22 you're three points up kill the game Ospreys have fallen apart finish it off they didn't and we both noticed it that they just started to hesitate and those moments of hesitation I've seen it in Gaelic football with, with a certain county down there it's when you start contemplating things your game goes away I think that happens when you're not like Leinster who have seven wins out of seven I think, I think the more you win the better you get at winning uh, you see it with top top sports people whether they're individuals like tennis players or whether they're uh, top football teams or top GAA teams here they just winning gives them that edge. And the more you win, the easier it is to make the right decisions. And everybody gets on to the, to the one hymn sheet. Uh, Connacht were second-guessing themselves a little bit there. Um, but there was some... Tom Farrell was very impressive this evening. That's the best yeah. we've seen him for a while. Uh, I thought Alex Wooten played really, really well. He looks good under the high ball. He's been waiting a long time. That's the kind of guys that you want. Um, we need more back options. We've been crying out for this. Adam Byrne, that little cameo, that little turnover he did on his own line, it was more than little, it was massive, really important. And I thought John Porch had a great game. John Porch has played really well all season, in my view. Some people have said he, that they didn't think he is, but I think he brings a physicality to that position. And he brings a sort of a buccaneering spirit. I think he's driven on by Mac Hansen. I think they both kind of almost want to outdo each other a bit in the bravado, but you've got to back that up. Uh, sometimes his tackling's a little off, but y y you need players like that who are prepared to, to mix it up. David Hawkshaw was huge tonight. I would nearly have given him man of the match. They gave it to Caelan Blade, fair play. That's decisions. Uh, he's starting to look a very serious option as well. And it's important that you have that, that you're not going back. They, they've spoken about this very openly, the players have spoken about it and the coaches, at the end of the season they have a big review and the players' biggest complaint basically to the coaches was you didn't play enough of us last season, too many players played too many games and when the players had to be brought in to replace player A who maybe have played five games in a row, they weren't ready and their confidence had been dented. So now I think they all feel that they have an opportunity to start a game or to come off the bench and seize the opportunity. And that's what you want. You want a camp that's bubbling along. They have to get better. They really do. If they, if they're, as yeah, you, I agree. If they, if they I want. agree. And that's what I've been saying. And I think you're on the same page, yeah. If, if they want to be serious about beating Munster. It's time for this group. These guys are dead. Like, I'll say this, right? Connor Oliver got man of the match uh, last week and I was like, yeah, I don't think he was man of the match. I think he was good. This is just my opinion, folks. Hit me back. I was like, no, a couple of his penalties were silly penalties. and give away penalties. Tonight, I thought he was absolutely outstanding. I just thought he was hounding and harrying. He was everywhere. He was an absolute measure of what we want our sevens to be and Oshin Dowling as well. Just two players I wanted to pick out. Oshin Dowling just had an immense game, but sure, so many of them 
battled away, but he was really, really good. He was, and before before we finish off now, because I want to I want to finish off because yeah. you're sounding tired and you're sounding even yeah. more tired, and you've been working for the last couple of hours. I've just been sitting in the background doing a few stats. And I was at the Galwegians game today. Ah, no, well, there you go. go. Twenty nine each draw Ooh. against Lego. You had a lot of notes to take. Yes, in the pouring rain. Mm. Let me tell you. That was pretty wet. <laughs> it was a bit wet down there. Well, someone who'll be happy with that is Jared Butler because he's involved with Weegins. Um, I'm not sure if it's the men or the women. He's definitely involved with Weegins in some way. But Jared Butler got his hundred cap tonight. Uh, 39th player to do that for Connacht. Um, it's a hell of an achievement for someone who's a really, really interesting character in his own way. He is. Uh, I love chatting to him when they put him up for interview. They don't do it very often. I hope we see a bit more of him now that he's not captain because they, fair play, they held him back for some of their own media stuff. Um, deep thinker. Um, I think he's getting better at understanding his role. You would say, well, he should do. He's played a hundred times, but it's a learning curve. I, you know, when I was uh, was in South Africa, you you talk to people, you talk to the coaches, talking the, you know, Devault made that point when I interviewed him down there that you have to strive to get better. Dave Howarth interviewed at the documentary last week. Top sports people are obsessed with getting better and it's small increments and he I think has got better I think he enjoyed being captain but I think he was happy to pass the bat on on to uh, Jack Carty uh, he's Ireland qualified now I think he's probably realistic to know that at the moment the Irish back row is very busy but after the World Cup and players some players might slide away and say we've had enough um, he's a very very good player and I think he's a good foil for Jack on the field. I think he is the pack leader. I think he handles situations well there. I'm delighted for him um, because he's he's a really decent guy. But then they all are when you meet them and you interview them. There's there, there's no edge there, uh, but he comes across well. And he had to get involved. His first season, remember, was, was a complex old season. Um, and he probably wondered what the hell was going on, um, you know, going back a few years uh, but he settled in really really well he's an integral part of the team and he's a player I think who handles rotation very well don't think he gets too concerned and again experienced players handle it because if you're a young player and you've played well and the next thing you know well we're resting you and that player's going "Why, why I think Jared understands look you know Paul Boyle's come in or you're moving position or in a can play across the back row and that's a big plus so well done him for 100 and let's hope he gets 100 more Yeah I think it says something that the brilliant Connacht fans uh, tonight because by God I could hear them and, and like must be been upwards of about 50 they were outstanding and I love the 100 balloon they had for him coming on because you know they're, that's been broadcast across the URC and, and they don't pay a lot of attention to us in Connacht and it, it's lovely that those people who are like tuning in and waking up to guys like Jared Butler are going oh God these fans really 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 uh, value this guy. So they did a great job of representing, I think is what some people say sometimes. So great job for them. Can I finish on the point here, right? Peter Dooley, not there. Finlay Bealham, not there. Who's in the second one? Niall Murray, not there. Keen Prendergast, not there. Josh Murphy, not there. Mac Hansen, not there. Bundiaki, not there. Like, you know, I've been pushing back against this kind of improvement, improvement stuff because I feel there's huge potential in this rugby team. That's why I'm a bit angsty this season, right? I want more from them. And tonight just gives me a better feeling because we have the players to do this. We scored them great tries. We figured it out. They're games we used to lose. We didn't lose tonight. That's a good sign. It certainly is. OK. We'll be putting out some interesting audio now over the next three or four weeks. I'll take it. We'll, we'll, we'll probably do a, a quick review maybe Wednesday or Thursday next week of where we are for this season then we'll take a week's break and then we'll have a couple of bits and pieces that William got down in South Africa and other bits of audio because I'm, I'm a bit more ambitious with my editing and trying to get more yeah. you know running things into one another and try and tell a bit more of the story of Connacht because we want to know more of how they get to where they are it's not just about what's going on in the field And for our Patreons, we will have a special competition. Look out for that during the week. Brilliant stuff. And if you have questions for us for Wednesday, uh, will you send them in on Discord, folks? Because we'll we'll open a section of the pod. If we get enough questions, 
send them in and we'll open up a section of the pod and you can take over. We, I think in some podcasts they call it the press conference. You ask us the question, so do that. And also watch Relentless on Thursday because it's a great showcase of behind the scenes, the passion and the drive that's going into this team. A uh, really good job by that and I just think it's well worth watching and I really, I really, really enjoyed William's interview this uh, week as well. It was a super little way of setting it up. It was indeed. So remember, folks, if you're not a patron, you're missing a whole hell of a lot of audio that we've got from Connacht, t- tells of the Connacht story. So join up at patreon.com slash craggy rugby and we'll talk to you again soon. Loose, cut it loose. Break out or nothing changes. Side.